Chris Abraham, everybody. Um, that's an inspiring story. It's the second time I've heard it, actually. The first thing, I can't believe there's an airport in Cardiff, Chris. I mean, is that, is that actually a thing? No planes, just an airport, right? Okay. Um, he'll be having his own private jet soon, I'd imagine, in the next couple of years. But um, no, it's an amazing story, and it's the second time I've heard it in the last few weeks, and it gets better every time. And, and actually, I've heard it quite a few times, because I've known Chris for four or five years now, and, and, and he's become a friend of mine as well. So thank you very much to, uh, to Chris. Um, really appreciate everything he does for, for him, his business, his family, but also his contribution to EXP as well. So um, up next, ladies and gentlemen, um, we welcome our next international speaker, our first keynote of the day, of the weekend, of the two days, um, the renowned Lee Woodward. Now, Lee is a name synonymous with success in uh, the real estate industry. He's the author of the Complete Salesperson course, which is a course and model that has changed Australian real estate uh, altogether. Now, in his first year of sales ever, Lee rocketed into, the top, uh, into Australia's top 2% of agents, um, showcasing his exceptional talent and dedication to the field. Um, Lee's designed uh, a real estate management system used by over 10,000 agents, and he's the producer of the leading real estate sales podcast, We Are Selling. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming all the way from Australia. Um, he'll be speaking about the topic on claiming doors and winning business. It's Mr. Lee Woodward. Thank you very much. Good morning. Great to be here, being asked to come over and speak in the UK about the Australian market and the people. What we do is an absolute honour. Our countries are different, but we have one thing the same, men and women. And they have to make a decision on who they'll go with, who they'll trust, and who's got the right intention to protect the asset. I want to start with that. For every one of us in this room, our job is to protect the asset. That's what the owner's after, which means not to undersell the property. In both our countries, people are given rock-low deals, crazy low fees, because there's nothing else to offer when you've got nothing else to offer. All you can do is cut rates. And in Australia, it's no different to here. We've got people charging 1.5%. And then just before uh, leaving Australia, I was on an assignment with our top agent, who's 3.7%. And in asking him that question, you know, there's a significant difference in the impact you're having on people but at 3.7%, what made you move to that number? He said, well, when I charged the same, they said we're all the same. So I thought, I'll, I'll change the conversation. I'm now 3.7. And they go, why? And he said, the next thing I could do is just live up to that brochure of what that delivery was. So what I'm going to take you through today is what we call claiming doors. And real estate is, is about nothing but claiming doors. And claiming doors is when you drive through your area, your turf, and you see a door of a person you sold to, you can put the EXP brand on that one and say, that's one of my doors. But the owner of that one bought that one off Foxton's, that's one of my doors because relationship over d does everything. And I've been studying this number for over 30 years. And I did. I came into real estate when I was 22. I was a plumber by trade, which, which was a significant time for me. I came into an industry where agents didn't have product knowledge. And being a plumber, I really understand, understood property construction and so forth. I remember following an agent through a house and he says to the lady, yep, it's all ducted air conditioning. And it was the bath vent for the, for the room upstairs. And you're thinking, this will be good on settlement. Where's the, where's the remote? What, for the bath vent? And suddenly you think, wow, product knowledge is important. But in that first year, when I reached the top 2% of agents in Australia, most agents were doing three, four deals a month. And I was doing 10 to 15. And at 10 to 15, I'd worked out my listing streams. Now, everyone talks about listing lead source, but listing streams are different. Uh, lawyers are listing streams. Buyer management is one-to-one -one prospecting. So everyone I, I would meet, I'd work out, did they have a trade-in? And I became really good at words, very, very good at words. And today, I'm going to showcase some of those words that have changed the Australian real estate industry. I'm going to show you a video clip which is really my last 30 years in real estate, what I've done in building the model. And I'm a structural trainer, not a motivational trainer, but it's very motivating when you're doing those sorts of numbers, if that makes sense. But I, as a person, I see things in sequences. Uh, so I'm forever drawing that diagram so people can gain visibility. And if you think about it, there's only three sequences, lead generation, lead conversion, client fulfillment. So in generating business for claiming doors, 
900 claimed doors is 46 transactions a year, if you have a sequence. If not, you're just hoping people like you, they turn up, will, will I go with you or not? How, what's your fees? And what's your fees become, there is no conversation. Because the consumer doesn't know what the consumer doesn't know. They just think, doesn't matter who you go with, you whack it on the net and someone's going to make an offer and they'll buy it. And that's not their fault. The consumer doesn't know what they don't know. They don't understand that we have followers. And some of our best uh, purchasers are not looking at the net. They're an off-portal purchaser. Off-market is not a good term. And that's a, a really crazy term in both our countries right now. I sold it off-market. I've got a concern about off-market. The, the next biggest craze is going to be off-agent. Because it's easy. We did it straight away. It's not easy at all. And when you start to learn the words or change the words, everything changes. It's like in both countries, people say, oh, we need to reduce the price. What a negative, horrible term for a consumer. Versus, Helen, great news. Have you sold it? No. But we haven't undersold it. Now we need to improve the price. But to improve the price is a different conversation to reduce the price. And then, and I've had really good success from this model, but in the last two years, I, I, tr I changed the training style to what I call snacks of information. And a snack is short, sharp content that people can take in on one point. And I'll give you an example, and I'll throw quite a few in, in this hour with you. And it was interesting, even putting this talk together, where do you start? There's so much to go on. The Complete Salesperson course goes for 16 hours. It's a, a two-day event. But I wanted to bring claiming doors and winning business so that you could walk out of here and say, that's what's going on in a different country. And I want to show you the model. This is the sequence that I built that over 10,000 agents now follow. We've all got a community and a service area. And we've got to communicate with our communications plan. The strategy is on the outside, starting with client re-engagement. With our digital marketing, we go into the main sequence, a potential vendor and the assets to communicate. Then we get them on a price update. The appraisal or assessment can happen. Then the property's listed. We start our just appraise deal with the QR code, the signboard, the Facebook launch, the QR codes, and then we reach weeks one and two of the campaign. OFI 1 and 2, the callback, the letters that go out now, everything's in sequence. Let the house do the heavy lifting. Don't do it all cold. If you've got 10 on the market, you've got 10 campaigns. It then goes right through to the sold exchange, the settlement, and then we've got future business. As you've met all these people, we then got to talk about them and their goals. Live mode, sell mode. Protecting the asset. This is the listing conversation, the stage marketing. And then it goes right through to the purchasing community, the marketing tools we use, working as a team, our network, and you have an enormous network, and you pull that all together, and you look at gaining visibility, and that is what we've got the Australian real estate marketing market doing, replicating that performance. And in our teams, they all have separate roles to the model. Some fresh terms for you. If I'm the lead agent, I run a leverage agent, but the leverage agent is listing and selling real estate on my behalf. I'm going to bring up a bit of history for you. When I first came in, I wanted to start an audio program. So I was a real estate salesperson for 10 years, was passionate about education, and the most famous person in Australian real estate is John McGrath. And anyway, by sheer accident, they were trying to recruit me to go over to McGrath, the brand. And I didn't want to change brands, I wanted to be a trainer. But I got to meet John. So I rocked in to meet John, and John said, are you going to join us? I said, no. He said, why are you here? I said, I wanted to meet you. Now, two weeks before that, I'd reached out to John's people, because I didn't have any people, and said, I want John to do this audio program. They said, yeah, certainly, it's 10,000 an episode. Right? I'm 10,000 short. Uh, will he do it? They said, no. He's on TV, he's on all the major TV shows. And I wrote on a whiteboard his name that I was going to interview him. And someone said to me, oh, good luck. Why don't you see if Elvis is available? And talk about keep the dream alive. And then I get this phone call saying John wants to meet me. I went in and met John. And I said, John, I want to do this audio program. It will go out to 
CD, this is Wait For Podcasts, it'll go out to the industry and I'd love to be part of it, which is Latin for you've got all the profile, I have none. And John said, I'll do it. I said, John, there's no money. He said, I didn't think so, Lee. I said, all good, as long as we're clear. The program went for 20 years and we interviewed 1,200 agents and it was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, and some of our, our top agents, uh, Josh Teslin here, you're talking about a 5 million GCI performer. And then in Series 7 of Real Estate Hot Topics, Matt Steinway came on as the new co-host. And for those of you that know Matt, he's had quite a strange story. He was a bouncer. We both look very, very young there. But this changed the Australian real estate marketplace. And in Australia right now, if you write 1.2 in fees, you've done really well. Matt's writing 5.5 million in fees with a team. Uh, his best month has been a million in fees. And people think, how does someone do that? Well, that's what a team of five or six does with leverage agents. But his greatest skill is claiming doors. And Matt was a door knocker for 20 years, just knocking doors, claiming those doors to get to a point that everyone knows who you are. And you walk down the street and you look at all the doors and you think, these are all my doors. All I could do now is have a communications program. And I think a lot of you, when you first come into real estate, you think, I've just got to get a prospecting program. There's a difference. A communications program is different, and there's a sequence to it, and I'll share that with you. Anyway, from there, we did the Matt Steinway system, and then every famous person in Australia wanted to be part of that particular audio program. And the magazine, uh, there's every famous person ever in the Australian real estate industry, was our front cover story, except Mick Jagger. That was a, a bit of a fluke of why he was front cover. But I look at all these people, and all working to the same thinking, sequence, and model. And then you think, there's got to be something in that, well, real estate, no matter where you are in the world, there's one thing that's the same. You wake up every morning, and you're either whinging or winning. You get the choice every day. I'm going in, I'm either going to whinge, or I'm going to win. And the only difference that makes you win is your use of technique. Everyone's got access to the tech, but not the technique. And I'll give you some labelling to give an example of this. So I've just finished the Australian Real Estate Advanced Listing Workshop Tour, which was absolutely amazing. All these people came through the workshops, but still the same things pop up. And, for example, I'm in a room like this, and I say to everyone, OK, let's discuss delivering fees. And everyone goes, silent. I go, why is everyone silent? And one guy goes, I just hope it doesn't come up at all. And I'm like, right, they're going to need to know. Be like, I'm going to build a house, and you go, oh, what's it going to cost to build? And the builder says, oh, I'll tell you at the end. Like, they're going to need to know. But I worked out very quickly, and it will be the same in this room. If you fear fees, people pick up on that. But the question is, what is your technique for delivering fees? And when, you, and when you start to study technique, everything's got a place. Just like the model, just like the sequence. So I said to the room, OK, firstly, if the owner says to you, what are your fees, you're out of sequence. You're on the back foot already. When you bring up the fees, you're on the front foot. And by the way, you should be proud of your fees, not scared of your fees. They'll pick up on that business energy. Would you agree with that? And the only reason you're scared of the fees is because everyone's going to undercut you. But that's because the owner can't gain visibility of why they'd be with you, which is a totally different concept. So I said to the audience, I'm going to teach you fees one, two, three. They go, what's that? Well, that's the name of it. Don't say it to the owner. You'll get locked up. But... Fees one, two, three is a technique. So, and I'll bring this up in a moment, but in any listing conversation, there's been a huge change in the communication process of how we present now. So it used to be we would go in and we'd tell the owner why we're the best, we're number one in the area, there's so many number ones in your area, everyone's number one. But the owner isn't interested in that. They care about selling one house once. And forget real estate for a moment, but if you study professional presenting, there is a sequence to it. So the first part of any presentation is discovery. And you do no content at all. You do not mention how good you are, what you do. And discovery comes under this technique. Questions get answers, statements get judged. When you ask great questions, people respond, and that's vendor involvement. When you say next statement, and we do this, and we've got all the buyers, statement after statement, you're in the wrong channel now. The skill or the technique is to interview the owner. To interview the owner 
It's what are my great questions in the discovery stage. So, for example, I could be walking around the property with the owners, and I say, so John and Helen, just suppose you've engaged EXP. We've got you a great result. You're ecstatic with our service. You've moved into your next house in Spain. What will you miss most about this one? And they tell you what they'll miss most about the home. Now, they're going to be the key selling propositions of that property. That makes sense. But what are you going to miss most about the home? And then I'm walking around again, and there's a great technique called tourable moments. If you sit down head to head, 40 minutes, very intense. When you're walking, there's no eye contact, and I can say, so Helen, tell me what I can't see in your home. They go, what do you mean? Every home has invisible value. Agents don't find it out, and you just get an average market price. And when you sell real estate, The difference between a great result and an average result is 10%. It's a lot of money. And it's my job to transfer that feeling to the purchaser so they understand what they're buying. So I need you to tell me what I can't see. What do you mean? Do you have solar? Yes, we do. And when we went through the garage, I noticed that big power point. Is that three-phase power? Yes, it is. And these floors seem warm. Do you have underfloor heating? Yes, we do. It's like 80,000 pound or dollars, probably 40,000 pound. That's a lot of money. And they go, yeah. But the skill is vendor involvement. That you're involving the owner that no one, know, no one knows the home as good as you do. And we've got to become an expert overnight. And it's only then that they can start to see that difference in what you're talking about and what they're doing. The guy on the bottom right-hand corner here, you can't really see him, but his name's Dane Atherton. Uh, we were only there two weeks ago doing the private complete salesperson course for his team. It does 160 sales a month. And at 160 sales a month, you're claiming a lot of doors. And suddenly, your established clients, now I don't know if you use the term past clients, do you use that term? Past or established? Past sounds like they're dead, whereas established is an established client program. But I look at all the greats and all the work that we do with them. And this is a great scene. Matt Steinway, Jamie Woodcock and John McGrath. Actually, Steve Carroll's from the UK, uh, went over to run Real Estate Hot Topics for us. But the magazine was always showcasing the very best of the best to get us that result. And actually, my wife, Robin's here today, who's our events manager. When COVID hit, we got smashed. Live events company, 22 staff, and I'm now fascinated. You can't work. First time in my career, you couldn't work harder, you just couldn't work. I think we lost 750000 in hotel deposits that were out there, couldn't get back. And you think, wow, I'm now, I used to get frustrated. I'm now fascinated. What do we do next? And for us, we had to jump into multimedia. And that became a really interesting moment of, okay, and for anyone in this room, you've got to be your own mechanic. So I started watching YouTube clips of what you could do because we were stage presenters. We hadn't done working down the barrel of a camera. So when I spoke for EXP in New York, they're all on that big screen, the camera's there in front of you, but it's a different skill to learn that. And one great thing about COVID, it taught all of us, what are your projects, what are your skills? You can't just keep outsourcing it. You know, one thing about this room, which is really important, this is business for grown-ups. You're not, you're not going to have 20 people around you doing everything for you. This is your business. You've got to be hands-on. You've got to have the tools. You've got to learn it. Why? That's the way the world is. You've got to be your own mechanic now. And if I look at your sales process, which is the same internationally, find, list, communicate, and sell. They're the cycles. Find, list, communicate, and sell. And then if I get more detailed on that and said, okay, let's look at your business plan. I put your face there in the middle. Every one of you in this room has got to generate business. Then how are you going to market you? Follow up for future business, getting yes for the appraisal. If you use the word appraisal, replace that word with the word assessment. Would you be, and another word change for you. I'll give you some word changes just so it freshens up dialogue for you. Don't say to people, would you be interested in an appraisal? Would you be open to an assessment? Now, if they're open to an assessment, what's the difference? Well, we look at three elements in an assessment. What would the property rent for? And we get a rental certificate. What would it sell for based on today? And I want you to write this one down what it would sell for if we did a price improvement program on the property. 
Now, a price improvement program is lemon and lime. That's when you are styling the property. We're going to get incredible photos. We're not just going to whack it on the net to see what happens. We're going to run a price improvement program. Does that make sense? So it's not that any agent's the same. And I hate that when people say all agents are the same. But in technique, I was sitting in Landrews and they go, I'll leave it. You know, you're way higher than the other people. They've offered us free marketing. All agents are the same. And I'd say, you know, John and Helen, I can understand you thinking that. We look the same. We're on the same portals. But that's like me saying to you, all school teachers are the same. Or do you think a really good school teacher would have a significant impact on the education of your children? Yes, they would. Well, in real estate, the worst thing you can do is put the right buyer in front of the wrong agent. That's the worst thing you could do. Because that agent who's just doing deals, and why would anyone charge a low rate if they're so good? You're getting the signals up front. And when you look at the difference in that sale price, appointing someone to protect the asset is, is what this is about. And if I don't get you the result, there is no cost anyway, because I didn't get you the result. I can't be fairer than that. But don't let me, there's no shortcuts to a great price. Let me do this properly. And, you know, it's so interesting, but about 18 months ago, we had to sell Robin and Sue's mum's place. Sue being Rob's sister, visiting over here at the moment. And the property had to go on the market. We are just coming out of COVID, and the marketplace was in a bit of a crazy time. Nan was going into a retirement village, and Rob and I took over the sale, appointed an agent. I said, Rob, we'll run a timed auction on this. Now, timed auctions had just started in Australia. No one was doing them, but I was teaching them. Um, we got acquired by a company called Realtor, and I just finished three years there. So I said, we'll run a timed auction, but we're also going to run a price improvement program. Now, in Oz, and I'm sure you've got it here, we can go to a site, type in the address, and as long as we've got the authority, it says you can have £15,000 straight away to promote the property, and it comes off on settlement. Do you use those services? It is Anyone for yes? Okay, this has been the biggest game changer for us. And I'll just break it down for you. When an owner, most owners are asset-rich, cash-poor. They don't have £5,000 to fix it. But would you agree right now, finished product sells well, unfinished product you'll struggle with? Like if it's finished, you're going to get a far better result. Now, Nan's place was great, but it was brown doors, brown timber, gold knobs, typical Nan's place. So Nan moved out, we stripped it, depersonalised it, the painters came in, we painted it the best colour in the world, which is? See? Not that different, is it? White. And that took them three weeks, they were exhausted. Then the stylist came in. And it was just a little townhouse um, near a beach area, but near the bowling club, really. And it was worth nine fifty. And we only know about a thousand agents in that area. Nine fifty, nine eighty, you'll do well. And Rob said, "Why are we doing a timed auction?" I said, "I've never done one. I'm training everyone. So let's do one." But I've got to tell you the significance of this story. In a timed auction, it starts, and you've got to set the reserve. And the agent came to us and said, I've got someone who will go for this straight away. They love it. They're in the area. I said, I'm sure they'll love it. And they made an offer of 920, which would have been acceptable. I said, but we're, we're going to go through the process. Oh, but other people won't want to QR code bid and be part of it. Let's see how we go. It went for two and a half weeks. And the buyers get to bid throughout the week. So Wednesday, it's not worth that. Thursday, two red wines later. Woo! We're on. And the bids started going up. And then it was the Thursday night. And we came in to watch it time out. And the property sold for 1.211. A significant difference in the sale price. Nan, on a bender. Woo! That's tax free. That's big money, isn't it? And even for me, I learned two things. One, the importance of transparency. When a buyer sees the other buyer's gone to 980, I'm going to a million. And then they've gone to 1.1, I'm going to 1.2. Because it was a digital sale, it just changed. And for the follow-up, there were 75 people following the property. They're the local surrounding residents saying, I'll scan the QR code, I want to know what it sells for. That's a listing stream. Because you are generating future business for you and what you do. Anyway, I thought I'd share that story with you because the digital sale is now really taking off in Australia when no one thought it would. 
and we use it for, 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 for sale and auction, and it's not distressed. But the digital sale, the consumer is taken to that. You know, think of a consumer. If I can see my pizza come up the driveway, how come I can't see where the price of the house is up to for the one I want to buy? It feels old-fashioned. And the reason you're in this room, you're a modern agent. You want to be a modern agent. And a modern agent uses tech and technique. And that traditional way of thinking, it's got to end at some point. And in Australia right now, our greatest agents are starting their career at 45. And they've got one skill. I have no idea what you're talking about of whatever happened. I'm just looking forward. And in a coachable moment, I've learnt the model, the system, and off we go. And that's why I look at business plans and think, you know, the presentation plan, the property marketing plan, objections, closing of paperwork, that doesn't change. We've never met before, but you could look at that and go, that's my life. And when I post on social, is it ego or info? They're the rules. You know, am I going to profit from your knowledge of what you just said, or you just tell me how good you are and it's you with it, having a champagne by yourself in front of a board, which is weird, <laughs> versus, you know, this is what happened to the owner, this is what they've done, the, the buyers are so excited. I'm trying to get the Australian marketplace at the moment to change the sold sticker to purchased. Purchased feels very different to sold. Purchase means the future owner is going to go on with the property. It feels different. And this is where wording plays such a big part of it. Okay, this is my goal for you today. It's called the five key business imperatives. Clarity of vision, goals, and objectives. When Adam selected me to come and speak to you, it was to present internationally what's going on in real estate. When you walk through those doors, you've gone as far as you can with what you know. And in progressive learning, it's only what you learn today that you can take forward, no matter who's on the stage. And it'll be an example such as in Facebook marketing, get the owner to post the digital link back to your website and say to all their friends, to all our family and friends, we're excited to announce we've appointed Lee Woodward of EXP to sell our home in. And we hope the next family loves living here as much as we do, and they post it on social. But going to 2,000 of their friends is far better than 2,000 of your friends. And it's that one shift of how can I spin the wheel and generate business. Determining a strategy and focusing on it, I'm going to give you a listing sequence in a moment. And I'm also going to give you some follow-through audio learning as well. Communicating effectively with your identified market. No matter what you do in lead generation, every one of us needs stickability. For me, that's been audio and podcast. So the We Are Selling podcast reached 50,000 downloads the other day. And you think, wow, that comes out every week, and that's the hardest thing. Success is about consistency. How do you get that? But for most of your consumers, their preferred method of content intake is podcasts, audiobooks. But we think, oh, that's a specialty thing to do. So should you move or should you renovate would be a podcast. The profit of a garden, it's a podcast. The power of floor plans, people buy space, it's a podcast. And they can be short, sharp snacks now where people go, I've been following you. And I heard that word before, database. Replace the word database with followers. That's what they are. And if they're following you on the types of properties that you sell and the type of work you do, that's how you become a leader. You've got followers. But genuine followers of the work that you are doing. Understand the customer's perspective and priorities. Uh, in both our countries, they don't have the greatest respect for real estate professionals. They think they're all the same, dodgy, they just want their commission. I'm spending my life changing that. And I've had more success with mature women to do that. One of my top agents right now is actually from the UK. She never sold real estate over here. She's been a mum all her life. And in Australia, uh, they're running a, a building business that went under. And you go under in a building business when someone won't pay you, and she had to go back to work. And Kathy's such an introverted girl, and she gets a job in real estate. And because she's not an agent, she wrote three and a half million in fees last year. And she started her career at 45. And I said, Kath, you'd be amazed at what you don't know is your greatest strength. But people love her as the person who protects the asset does showcase marketing. She's got the highest sale now. I only live about half an hour from where she is, and she's got the highest sale of the suburb. Yet all the famous agents are like, how does she do that? It's about human connection. Not about your ego of how good you think you are, but how well you can help people move. 
And I just look at her skill set. She was a chef over here, funny enough, in her earlier days. Chef's a tough gig. They're throwing pans at you. It's full on. So talk about tough environments. And then gets into real estate and just passionately falls in love with helping people. And then I look at the fees. And then people have been there 20 years in that same arena doing half her numbers. There's got to be something in the, you're either whinging or you're winning. And you get that mindset right. And then organising the business to deliver and surpass customer expectations is where it all comes about. Okay, I want you to grab your phones. We're going to have a little interactive moment here. And I'm testing my UK ro robot for the first time. So this number on screen, I'm going to use this for the rest of this session. And in a moment, I'm going to get you to text a key word, just a normal text message to the word, and it will shoot you back some of the wonderful things that we're doing in the country that I want you to experience in your phone and have your own copy of it. So, and a robotic number is really important. As you text it, it hits my database. If your name's in my database, your name comes up. If you're not, you're a brand new lead and we will chase you for the rest of your life. But it's a great way of capturing data and it's seasoned data because we're face to face. So if I work here right now in the local coffee shop, I'd have what a house is selling for around here, text this code, and receive it. In the end of the week, I go, 40 people have texted in for my sole report. Let's call them. Because that's a different level and grade of lead versus just social. The first one I want you to text is the word Lee, L-E-E. -E. And I'm now fascinated to see if this works in the UK, because it's my UK number. I've never had a UK number. So when you text the word Lee, that's going to shoot you back the podcast that comes out every week called We Are Selling. And it's got the most famous agents in Australia who appear, all our multi-million dollar performers and wonderful women, and John McGrath, Tom Panos, everyone's on there. And it comes out every week. Did that come back? Yeah. Woo! I can now breathe. Nothing worse than 300 people turning on you at once. Now, the reason that podcast is important is it's, there's a couple of things I'm about to say that are just straight out of that. So fees one, two, three, which I didn't do, I'll do that now for you, is one of those things. So, for example, when we look at your business world, right, and the agent's focus plan for 2024, structurally, everything we say today is going to fall into this. Lead generation, lead conversion, and client fulfillment. For any business in the world, they are the only lanes you can do. Quiz question, what lane am I in today? No. The lead was Adam heard about me through a podcast and reached out. The conversion came through when Adam rang me one day and said, hey, could you speak in Birmingham? And what are your fees? I said, tell me the date first. He gave me the date. I said, you want me to lock it in? He said, yep. Went, God bless you. <laughs> Always play beyond the line, never to the line. But today is client fulfillment. If this talk's no good, it's my fault. Does that make sense? So... Someone hears about me through audio, whatever it is. Well, actually, funny enough, Adam referred me to Glenn in New York to record EXP Explained, which is a multimedia conversion program to convert EXP agents to an EXP agent. Glenn's interviews in there. I do the podcasts. And people text. You can't do it from here, but when they text EXP in Australia, that comes back to them. And it's a multimedia conversion system. And it's how they build the lead generation for an agent saying, oh, I'm thinking about joining you, but what do I get? Text EXP, bang. Lee Wooder did the interview, and I interviewed Glenn on that. That was the first time I'd ever interviewed a billionaire, and what a humble, incredible person he is. That blew me away, that interview, of just how wonderful he is. And I want to help people in the world. And he said to me, oh, Lee, you know, I go to stadiums and think we can't fit them all in now. At 96,000 agents, I go to a stadium, we wouldn't fit the team in here. That's insane, isn't it? But, so client fulfillment is where I am. Claiming doors, a project for you after today, is in lead generation. Interviewing the owner and getting great questions for your listing conversation is lead conversion. Maybe learning a different method of sale or a communications plan or blended communication would be in client fulfillment. But while you're here for two days, what projects will progress you forward? That's what you've got to think of. And it's got to be a project. So... And I say this not to impress you, but to impress upon you. The podcast has been so successful, I no longer worry about lead generation ever again. 
And when you've got that much opportunity coming in, everything changes. So if you had 10 people ringing you a week saying, hey, you don't know me at all, but a friend of mine sold a home with you two months ago, I don't want to put mine on the market, how's your day going? Now that's called method of introduction. When Chris showed his van before, that's an agent identifier, where someone's going to bang on the van and say, hey, I want to put my house on the market. But he's, everybody else is driving a normal car, but he's using an agent identifier. But once you learn these projects, it's so powerful. But the biggest thing I'd ask you to do is bring this on your menu. Every one of us needs to have a learning menu, progressive learning. So in a moment, when I show you the claiming door sequence, you're getting, I'm going to learn claiming doors. That's going on my learning menu. I'm going to get good at delivering fees, and I'm going to use fees one, two, three. Would you like to hear fees one, two, three? Yeah. I'll do it now. So I'm in this listing conversation. I've done discovery. After discovery, you go into proof points, and then you move into confirmations and objections. Now, in fees one, two, three, you bring up the fees, not them. And I'll give you an example. So everything's going well, and you've all went in that lounge room, and then it turns, someone smiles or something, and you're like, oh, okay, this is going better. And you say, John and Helen, let's discuss all the numbers of your property that you need to know to make an informed decision. And there's three sets of numbers. The first number is your investment in EXP to represent you and all our agents and our team that works on the property. That's the first one. The second one is the marketing. And by the way, no one's using their own money anymore. We have our sales funding process. It comes off settlement at the end. But any repairs or styling, we can get that done and you don't have to use your own money. And then the last one is what's the property worth in the active marketplace if we ran a price improvement program. So let's discuss all your numbers. Firstly for EXP to, to represent you, and that's me and the team and our administration and compliance, we are 2.9% of the sale price. With the marketing, we'd be looking at an investment of about £3,500 for a property of this level. But let's discuss the actual price that your property could reach in the marketplace. Out of dialogue for a second. What just happened? Fees is a kilometre down the road now. And they can bring it back up. That's fine. But you've got to bring it up. Because it is... You've got to be proud of that fee versus, oh, I don't want to talk about fees. We work so hard in this industry and take calls at all different times of day and we work no sale, no charge. We don't get the result. There is no cost to you. Not many other people would work that way. They want payment along the way. But we don't. As an industry, we're paid on our performance fee, if we get that result. And this is where learning the technique side of it becomes really, really important. One more little label for you before I move on. This is in on your learning menu about presentation of property. Can you write this down? Lib mode, sell mode. Now, throughout this, if I say write it down, it's just a label for it, and you'll see these in the audios. But lib mode, sell mode is a technique that we introduced about presentation of property. Is that a sensitive topic when you walk around someone's home? It is. So I love it. I walk around and go, let's discuss the presentation of your property. Why? What's wrong with it? Nothing. The way you live here right now is what we call live mode. You're living in the home. But if you engage EXP to represent you, we've got to shift the property to sell mode. And sell mode is where we pack away all the family photos, all the things we don't need, all this stuff in boxes so the property can breathe. And this is a hard thing to explain to you, Helen. But when the buyer comes through, they're looking to buy their house, not yours. And the future owner of this property is trying to make a decision. And in live mode, there's like a $30,000, $40,000 difference between live mode and sell mode. And if you're engaging us to navigate the sale and be your property advisor, there's a big difference. And when you see properties on the market for a long time, do they, do they say this over here? I'm in no hurry. Do they say that? That was my best chance at that, by the way. <laughs> All right. I'm in no hurry. <laughs> and you think, you know they're going to say it. And then they say this. I'm not going to give it away. Does that happen? Okay, 
Jesus, big changes in our worlds, isn't there? So write this one down, the golden rule of real estate. So when they say, I'm in no hurry, you say, John, I'm so glad you brought this up. I need to explain to you the golden rule of real estate. What's that? The longer your property on the market, the longer your property is on the market, the less people expect to pay. And you will give it away. Because you're breaking the golden rule of real estate. That's why we do so much high-impact marketing early to get a result and bring that together. So that's the golden rule of real estate. But you know they're going to say that. But what's the technique for that? And to me, actually, I just brought out a thing in Australia called the Complete Snack App. I did the title, so hang on there. And the Complete Snack App, you just dial up fees one, two, three, and it's just the audio. Or it's the golden rule of real estate. Because there was no way everyone could remember all the dialogue or the concepts in what you're saying. Like, lib mode, sell mode is so real. I'll give you another one. Staged marketing. Now, staged marketing is more suited for the UK than it is the Australian marketplace. And by the way, uh, I did an interview over here in research prior to coming out and learned about your chain. Oh, my God. That was, a, that was an interesting day for me. I said, are you sure? <laughs> All those... In Australia, when you agree to the offer and we exchange, in six weeks, you, you are going. Oh, but I can't get my other. We don't care. <laughs> you are now a squatter. You're going to be arrested. Get out. And the, the, if you tried to break the sale, it's far, you'd save 200 grand by not going ahead. Like the circumstances of not going ahead is the property's resold the next day for whatever we can get. You lose your 10% deposit and you're sued for the difference. So whatever you need to do, go. But everything's 100% moving. So when I was doing my research, I went, sorry? <laughs> oh. Fascinating. Now, I've just come to terms with all that, but I'm okay. So, back to where we are. Let's move forward. Success is about consistency. Success is about consistency. Now, I'm going to teach you the listed to settle, sorry, the prospecting sequence. But one thing you need to do today when claiming doors is tag the door with something special. Now, Realtair was a real estate platform that bought our company, and we did three years for them. And anyway, when I arrived at Realtair, they were only using the software for proposals. And then I, could see, I saw what the software could do, and I generated a thing called the market update or the price update. And in Australia right now, we claim 54,000 doors a year from this one thing I'm, I'm going to show you. Sorry, 50,000 50, doors a month are being claimed in Australia now from digital prospecting which is the digital door knock, the digital letter. And when we send it and they open it, we get a text notification that they've opened it. We get another text notification that they've opened it three months down the track. And it means we can make calls on the rebound, not just ring people every day. I don't know what you say over here, but I'll just share my world's worst hated dialogue with you. Hi, it's Leaf Me XP. I'm just touching base. Would you like your base touched? <laughs> I don't understand that dialogue of... I'm touching bases, would you like your base touched? <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. And a reasons to call list becomes very important. Same number, so go back to your text message, and I'm really hoping this one works, but text the word market update. So you're texting two words, market update, to the same number, the UK number, and what that's going to bring you back is a market update, which has got the surrounding sales, and at the bottom of that, it's got a button saying book an appraisal. What's the replacement word for appraisal? Assessment. Assessment. That was said so confidently as if I know what I'm doing. So the market update works like this. You meet someone, could be a buyer inquiry. You say, oh, hi, Helen, you've caught up about um, Dairy Street. Yes, when can I see it? I could get you through that one in the next few days. Have you been looking for long? Oh, about six months. And the property in now, are you going to hang on to that one or... No, no, we'll need to sell it, but we don't want to sell ours unless we've got somewhere to go. Whereabouts are you? We're in Marshall Street. Oh, that's a good spot. We've sold a lot down there. What number Marshall Street are you? Number five. Fantastic. Look, at the end of this phone call, I'm going to shoot you a link to a market update of five Marshall Street. 
I'll update it every six months for you, and it just keeps you up to date with the current relevant market so you can make the right informed decision. I've just claimed a door, and that's what goes to them. Has everyone got that, what's come through? Yeah. Cool. If you scroll right down to the bottom, it says book an appraisal. I'll be in your garden in a second. <laughs> and that's how we're claiming doors at the moment. But since I brought that into Realtor, it has changed the game. We're seeing agents list 10, 12 a month and see if this is the same. Communication has changed. Example, you can ring someone so much now, you will lose the business. Do you agree with that? You can, you'll get a restraining order on you because that's just seen as not useful. Yet, done correctly, and they go, oh, Lee, I got my price update through the other day. I can't believe what that house sold for. Yeah. And they go, did you guys sell that one? We did. That was a great result. Yeah, a bit of a fake read, that one. What do you mean? Well, you look at the price, it looks amazing. But behind the scenes, we did $5,000 in repairs using the sales funding process. With the marketing, they did a $6,000 campaign. And if they didn't, our next buyer was like 80000 below. So great result, but a bit of a fake read. There's a lot went into that one. That's a bit different too. That was easy, happened straight away. When you have that conversation, you are digging your own grave. A fake read is a great little way of saying in your fee justification process just how much we do. Okay, same one. Now do digital intro. Now the one that's coming back to you is the Dane Atherton team that we were working with just two weeks ago. They're called Coastal. And they do that Gold Coast market, which is pretty amazing. You've got properties from 500,000 to 50 million, quite a diverse marketplace. But when you look at their marketing, and I had to ring Dane before coming here saying, Mate, I'm off to uh, Birmingham, by the way. Where? Don't worry. I said, are you OK if I showcase your visuals? Yeah, mate, whatever you need. That is world class what you're seeing there. Absolutely world class digital modern marketing. So that one there is the digital introduction. So before you go out to, to see someone, Helen, really looking forward to seeing you at uh, Monday, 4.30 p.m. Prior to coming out, I'm just going to shoot you a link. And that will have our agenda of what we're going to discuss, which is what's your property worth, how long it will take to sell, what are the changeover costs, and how we market the home should you engage our services. But if you could have a look through that, uh, and any questions you've got, that's going to really assist me in pricing the property while we're together. And you're doing the digital introduction. Does that make sense, everyone? Then we go in, we do the conversation. Fees one, two, three. Invisible value. Lib mode, sell mode. And then right at the end of that, they go, oh, look, you were great, but I've got another seven coming in. Okay. And that lost voice. And I don't know what you do here, but most people say, look, I'll send you through my proposal. Replace the word proposal with the word plan. Helen, that's fine. I'm going to go away and put a plan together for you. And in that plan, I'm going to put the calendar of events, the surrounding comparable sales, the marketing investment, it's going to take me a bit of time to do, but I'll, I'll go away and put that plan together for you. I'll leave that'll be great. Helen, could I ask you, you wouldn't sign or go with anyone until you've seen my plan? Yeah, no, that's fine. Great, I'm going to go away and put my time into, because I think this is really worth getting this right. I think people would expect to see a property like this with EXP. So the one that goes out then is, you can use the word proposal for this one. and that will give you the coastal proposal. It's only finished two weeks ago. But I just wanted you to see, because I don't know what you do over here for digital communications, but getting onto their phone is the only place you need to be today. They've ordered a coffee, they're going through your stuff, if that makes sense. So, does that one come back? Click on it, go to the hamburger menu, which is in the right-hand corner, and in the hamburger menu, you'll see that index of everything you can click on, Go to the calendar of events or timing will be the one. And timing is where people start to understand the difference between an ordinary agent and a great agent, if that makes sense. Okay. I'm going to show you this. This is the prospecting pitch and sign sequence. And I'm going to stop at five there and give an example. So this sequence goes to 10. In structural learning, I do everything in 10s. 
our list of the sales process has 10 milestones. And number five in milestones is launch to right move. So I come in and say to you, where are, where are we up to with High Street? We're 50% there, I know you've gone to launch. And everything's numbered because 10 gives you 100%, if that makes sense. So structurally, we're 20% there, 30%. If it's settled, we're 100% there. That's how in structure, and I've done this with a prospecting sequence. So the first part of this prospecting sequence is claim doors. So a buyer rings you up, they've got a property in Marshall Street, I'm going to shoot you that link. Now you notice before I didn't say, would you like one? No, no, no. I'm sending you one, is a very different way of getting consent. Just smile. At the end of this phone call, I'm going to shoot you a link, and you're going to love it. You just haven't seen it yet. And it's got all the surrounding sales around you. So I've claimed the door. I know who they are. Put them on a price update. I'll tell you a door that we miss in Australia, and we've only just fixed it. You know when you're ringing through all your buyers, and they say, oh, Lee, thanks for all your help, but we've just bought off whoever. What do you do at that moment? I'm really fascinated to know what the UK does compared to what Australia was doing. Archive, good look. Yeah, which one did they buy? Most people go, delete, tosser. <laughs> and you think, oh my God. So suddenly, I, hi Helen, Lee from EXP. Oh Lee, we're so sorry, but we bought a property off such and such on Saturday. Where did you buy? 10 Marshall Street. What'd you pay? I oh, know that house. We paid 850. You did well. That'd be 900 with us. You've done so well. Now, Helen, you're right in the center of my turf. At the end of this phone call, I'm going to shoot you a link to a price update with all the surrounding sales of your house. Talk about claim a door versus delete. And within three years, they'll think they bought it off you because the other agent doesn't have an established client program and they can't remember who it is. But claiming doors is all, 900 claim doors, 46 transactions. And 46 transactions will be a good living here, I would imagine. And then you go to your leverage agents and your team, then you're breaking 120. Suddenly, claiming doors become so important. So claim the door, price update, call and connect. Now, because we get the notification that they've opened it, you can't ring and say, oh, you've opened it three times, I'm your stalker. So we just ring up and say, hi, Helen, I sent you a price update. Did you receive it? Oh, I did, Lee, and I can't believe uh, what those properties are selling for. Beautiful. Step four, send something. Helen, we've just listed a property two streets from you, and whoever buys that would buy your place. They're going to be the same ideal candidate profile. I'll let you know when it's sold. But I'm going to shoot you the link now just so you can have a look of what the people are going to be looking at in comparison to your own, and I'll keep you updated. If you want to come through it, happy to show you through. Oh, Lee, thanks for your help. Price update number two comes out. Now they're, now they're in the groove. This is great. So I'm 50% there. We then move on. I'm going to be sending my just listed links, just sold links, so I can book the appraisal. I go in for the appraisal. I send my pitch with my digital introduction. And then finally, inspect and present and then the digital signature, which is on that proposal at the end. Does that make sense, everyone? And in a sequence like that, it's a repeatable performance. So in Australia right now, I've got agents that that's their only job, is to run that sequence on behalf of the lead agent. That is their position description. If they do number 11, we'll miss you around here. There's just, good. the Australians got that, that was good. So there is no number 11. There is only those 10 steps in a sequence. Is that making sense? Okay, let's move forward. So, claiming doors becomes really important for continuous marketing. Continuous marketing, this is where the world's changed. For all of us in this room, this is what marketing looks like now. You've got your channels on the left, and then the actual things you'll be doing. So, Channels, Monday, this is going out. Tuesday, this is going out. Wednesday, that property's going live on the net, so I'm going to get that one out there as well. And continuous marketing, it's no longer about monthly, quarterly, annual. It's continuous. Every day and every way, we've got to be continually marketing to bring that all together. So your posts are going back to something, and Facebook is a great one for this. 
and working in campaign, education-based marketing. So I've been watching some of the videos that you guys do online, which are great, and pretty much like ours, promotional videos. I ask you to consider education-based marketing as a different way of doing it. In education-based marketing, and it's just a recommendation, they, they profit from your knowledge, if that makes sense. Or you do a video explainer of the property, which is not a promotional video. I want to show you a, a live one. This is, is Manly overpriced? Is Manly overpriced? That's a question people ask me all the time. My belief is Manly is seen as a safe haven for investors, a bit like a New York City, Central London or Bondo Beach. I believe the market this year will see some correction across Sydney. However, if you look at what I call the Harbourside Horseshoe, about a five kilometre radius around Sydney Harbour, lifestyle suburbs that are close to the harbour, close to beaches and close to transport in a major job centre, this is the prime areas where people want to live and I think almost regardless of economic conditions, they're very resilient. Within that horseshoe, there are also particular suburbs which have a strong brand within themselves. Places like Bondi, Manly, Paddington and Circular Quay, just to name a few. Manly recently had the Australian Open of Surfing and the more of these kind of events a suburb has, the more it puts them on the map. The stronger the brand, the higher premium price can be charged. So what I've created is a little chart comparing Manly, Bondi, New York City, and Central London. So if we start with the average weekly rent, you can see that Manly rent in Bondi is fairly on par at 680 and 650 per week. New York's a fair bit more expensive, and Central London is more expensive again. Where the main difference, where I believe Manly is underpriced, is when you get to the premium end of the market. Manly at the highest amount is only still achieving around 30,000 a square metre for luxury apartments. Bondi, on the other hand, has achieved regularly 50,000 a square metre. There's a big disparity there and the gap should be and will continue to close. On a world scale, when you compare someone like Manhattan, they're achieving 140,000 a square metre in US dollars. So if you're thinking of downsizing into one of Sydney's premium suburbs like Manly, be rest assured the statistics and demographics show that the demand for these types of suburbs will only increase over time because of their lifestyle and the proximity to the CBD. Was that ego or info? People profit from that knowledge. Now I just realised then, we were quoting Central London, I thought, I hope this is accurate from our little agent there. But it's amazing how people can think, in, compared to other parts of the world, how that comes together. Okay, I'm in my final wrap up here. I want to give you some really key points. Uh, when you're claiming doors, code your area. Now, coding your area is where you pick a patch. So this is one of our agents who's got 70% market share. We've never had that before. And what he did, area one, area three. And everyone goes, what text that? That is a texter. That's a pen just to mark out the codes. But then the database follows, find area six, find area four. And then when they do the marketing, there's an incredible accuracy where we may say, find area six, weatherboard. And we do the weatherboard report direct to the weatherboards. Or we do same suburb, but it's the, that type of property in that area and it's coded. And it makes such a difference to the targeted prospecting when coding your area. Does that make sense? Cool. Just appraised deals. You've just appraised the property in a street, and then here we are. We've just appraised the property in your street. We're just compiling a detailed marketplace report specifically for your street following a request by one of the neighbours to have their property appraised. The report includes, as a courtesy, we're offering uh, the residents of your street a free copy of the report. Give me a call and I'll get it to you. Very powerful way of starting to work in the heat, working in campaign. This next thing I want to show you was one of our biggest listing conversions for the lounge room presenting. And it's when we talk about protecting the asset, I designed a new booklet for the agents to use. And it looks like this. So if I'm going out to a property, I'll say, hi, Mavis, look forward to seeing you at 4 o'clock on Tuesday the 12th. I've enclosed a booklet of a house we've just sold. If you could have a look through this and give thought to what you think the front page cover would be. 
The inside double page spread is our dollar shop, the best photo of the house. What's your 80% area? Where do you spend 80% of your time? As for us in the, the area, we have that covered. Features at a glance. What are the best five key selling propositions of your home and what words best describe the property? If you have a site plan and, and floor plan, please have those available. If not, we'll arrange them for you. Property inclusions. Every feature in your home has a dollar value and it's our job to protect the asset. You cannot provide us with too much information. And we've also got the purchasing steps for people purchasing from overseas. I'll bring in some surrounding sales evidence so that we've got an understanding of the numbers that we need to use. If you could fill in that booklet and the owner thinks nobody else wants to showcase the home the way that you do, there is a significant difference in the impact that you can have. They go, everybody else said, just one bit of paper, close to schools, shops and transport. Do you have VPA over here? Okay. VPA used to be vendor paid advertising. We've now just rejigged that to value performance advertising. But with that sales funding system now, all our owners are putting five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars into the property before going on the market. I call that a commitment fee. If you're about to invest that and it's got to come off the settlement, you're moving. A commitment fee. How much commitment have they got to the property? Okay, I did mention this before, but there's four areas to a presentation. Discovery, proof points, objections, confirmations, closure, and sign-off. And it's so important we understand how this works. In discovery, there's no content. Proof point could be lib mode, sell mode. A proof point could be how we've actually got the marketing that's going through. I love this photo. This is what you do for a job. There's a little bit more to selling real estate today than there was. You are in the multimedia business, you just happen to sell real estate. Uh, one thing I'm really working hard on in Australia at the moment is what we call the leave behind. It's actually a good name. We leave it behind. So we go in and we present, but a leave behind is not about you, it's about the deliverables of you. I've got two quick examples to show you if that's okay. This one's hot off the press. So Image is a property that I work for. You can see how we've redone that photo for the, the front because that's the style of home that they sell. Then on the inside, we've got this one conversation. John and Helen, real estate's about attract, engage, commit. That's all we do at XP. So when we attract people to the property, this is our preparation and what we do. We get them to engage. That's when they come through our site, could be interested in making that inspection. Then the last part is the reason you're engaging me is to bring it all together. And how we get them to make an offer, extract that dollars. We don't wait for someone to buy it. We want to make sure we take them out of the marketplace from the other properties. But attract, engage, commit. Make sense? Just testing my UK compatibility here. Well, when you... Actually, I'll show you this one. So the number one agent in our country right now is Matt Steinmaiden. This is his leave behind. Now... When Matt recorded The Road to Number One, the podcast that we did, we're coming out of the studio, and he said, mate, need your help. I said, what possible help could you need, by the way? He said, oh, I'm in the lounge rooms right now, and presenting's fine, that's all good, but they're all saying to me, oh, where is that? What is that? Can I get a copy of that? I said, yeah, that's called the lead behind. It's not your proposal, it's the deliverables that you would do. So I sat him down, you talk, I'll take notes, because that's what I do. This is what we came up with. And I want to show you this because it's an international example of one of the best agents in our country. But internationally, that would like, the numbers they're doing are just enormous. No graphics on the front. This is an industrial strength document. You're not trying to sell them. You're trying to convince them that you would pay that extra to invest in this team versus your cheap options in the marketplace. This is what it looks like. So no graphics on the front, the McGrath real estate selling system, you open it up and it's in three steps. Step one is what we do behind the scenes and they're the things I'll be doing for you. Step two is going live. And when we go live with the property, this is what I'll be doing for you. Step three is bring it all together. The biggest reason you hire me is to do the negotiation, collaborate with the purchaser, all the legals, all the banks and hold it all together so we can pay the nominated funds into your bank account and that 
is what I'll be doing for you. You'll meet my team, and should you decide to go with us, I'm going to leave this with you, and that's exactly what you get should you decide to go with us. The leave behind. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings me to the end of my session. Absolute honour to come over here and speak to you and show you what we're doing on the other side of the world. We're now going to morning tea being served outside, but thank you very much, and I'll see you on your return. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you very much, Lee. That was amazing. I think Lee has just leapfrogged into the first position. First favourite Aussie above Kylie Minogue and Ange Postacoglu even. So, um, so no, thank you, Lee. And although we're 10,000 or so miles apart, a lot of that stuff there really resonates, I think, across, you know, across the world. Um, so, yeah, tea and coffee break now. Um, back for 11.30. So if you make your way up, go to the mezzanine. Tea and coffee's up there. And we'll see you back at 11.30.